Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to Reading in the Dark. Byron here. This video is going to be my TBR for the month of November. Believe it or not, it is actually November now, which is insane. Uh, my favorite month of October is over by the time you're seeing this, which is sadness in the land. However, November is gonna be great too, and I have some really cool things that I wanna read this month. So I'm gonna just jump right into my TBR for the month. Now I'm gonna read these in some order. I'm gonna present them in no order in particular, uh, but I'm gonna read them at some point in November. Now what I've done is I've chosen the equivalent of six books for myself to read in November. I sort of think six books per month is kind of the sweet spot for me. That's what I can handle because I can read slightly more than one book a week depending on the kind of book it is and like what's happening in life at that time. Uh, but I don't, wanna con I don't want to commit myself to two books a week because I think that's kind of too much for me. Um, some weeks it's not and some weeks it is. So six books is my sweet spot. Now two of the books that I have on my list for this month are already half read and I put them aside because of Spookathon. So I'm counting them as one book because I've already read half. And those two books are, you guessed it, The Wild Inside by Christine Carbo. I'm not going to talk about this book again. It's about a man who works for the National Park Service investigating a very grisly murder. Okay, it was my almost DNF, I don't like to DNF things book that I was talking about in that vlog. It's fine, and so I'm not gonna DNF it. I'm gonna pick it up again in November and finish it. Uh, the next book is also partially read, and that is The Persian Boy by Mary Renault. The Persian Boy is book two of the Alexander the Great trilogy that is um, really well thought of and so far thrilling me. Uh, Mary Renault is a very well-known historical fiction author. She's passed away. And uh, she wrote these really beautiful novels about um, these sort of larger than life historical figures, um, men mostly, and she wrote a very well-loved trilogy about Alexander the Great that started with um, Fire from Heaven, which I read and really enjoyed, although it was very hard for me to get through because a lot of it was over my head, history-wise, and I'll have to read it again one day when I know more. Um, and then the second book is this book, The Persian Boy, which follows sort of the career of Alexander the Great and his later years as seen through the um, the narration of a eunuch who is sort of, you know, sold into his service, if you will. And then the third book is the next book I'm going to read in November, and that is Funeral Games by Mary Renault. And I think that that book takes place after Alexander's death. And I could be wrong about that, but I think so. And when I finish that, I'm gonna do like a wrap up of the Alexander trilogy uh, because that trilogy has been kind of something I've been working on for <laughs> frankly years. Um, so I'm excited to get through it and kind of wrap up my thoughts about it. Um, and then, okay, so the next books on here, there's actually one, two, three, four other books for November. And I'm gonna read these in some order, I'm not sure. One of these, two of these are actually physical books that I have on my shelf but I'm not gonna hold them up because I've just decided that I just don't like doing that. Trust me, it's better off for all of us if I don't. So one of the books that I'm gonna read is a hardcover that I have. It's a Star Trek book, which I haven't read a Star Trek book in a minute and I'm not sure why. This is Best Destiny by Diane Carey. I bought this or it was bought for me at some point when I was in middle school, high school, I don't know, sometime in the 90s. I have been looking at this book cover and seeing this book on a shelf somewhere from like most of my adult life and I've never read it. This is an old book about um, basically the youth of uh, James T. Kirk, famous Captain Kirk from Star Trek. It tells his backstory and the blurb says, as James T. Kirk prepares to retire from a long and illustrious Starfleet career, events in a distant part of the Federation draw him back to a part of the galaxy he had last visited as a young man. At 16, Kirk is troubled, estranged from his father and has a bleak future, however, a trip into space with Kirk's father, George, and Starfleet legend, Captain Robert April, changes Kirk's life forever when a simple voyage becomes a deadly trap. Soon Kirk and his father find themselves fighting for their lives against a vicious and powerful enemy. So um, that sounds fun, and I don't know if it's good. It has a pretty decent rating on Goodreads, but you never know if that really means anything. But I am excited to read this book because it's one of the few books that I've had in my possession for most of my life and just haven't read yet. So, and I'm excited to read another Trek book because I still have quite a few on my shelf that I haven't read and I have a few in my digital TBR that I haven't read. And I was missing Star Trek in my reading life the last couple of months. So I'm gonna definitely enjoy picking that one up. The next book on my list 
is Neptune Crossing by Jeffrey A. Carver. This is another book that I have had in my digital TBR for years and I never picked it up. I think I got it because it was free, frankly, but it's part of a long series that is general, like almost consistently rated book after book about between three and a half and four stars. Um, this is like a sci-fi story about a man who has something called um, an alien quirks, which is like a presence uh, controlling his mind and it's using him as a tool to try and save the earth from a cataclysmic collision of some sort. It says, when John Bandicut sets out across the surface of Triton, He's hardly ready for the storm of chaos that's about to blow through his life. The alien quirks that soon inhabits his mind is humanity's first contact with an alien life. A contact Bandicut can reveal to no one. The quirks, part of an ancient galactic civilization that manipulates chaos theory to predict catastrophic events, seeks to prevent a cometary collision that could destroy the Earth, but it must have help. And this is from the Nebula-nominated author of Eternity's End. Um, so... This sounds like fun because I don't read very many sci-fi books that are not a part of a larger sort of universe, like a cinematic universe, like Star Trek or Star Wars or something like that. It's usually a book that's a tie into one of those big properties. And this is just a science fiction book that lives in its own world. And uh, that's kind of cool. And it's there's so many of those and I don't read them and that's really dumb. So I'm excited to read it and um, hopefully I love it because then there's a long series of books that follow it. Um, another book that's on my list for November, which is a book that I have had in my possession for a very long time, it's actually a book that I think used to be my mother's and then she read it and then she said she didn't want it anymore. It's actually an autobiography, the autobiography of Mary Tyler Moore, actress who passed away uh, earlier this last year. It's called After All by Mary Tyler Moore. I grew up watching the Mary Tyler Moore show on Nick at Night and also the Dick Van Dyke show on Nick at Night and I just have always kind of just had a soft spot in my heart for Mary Tyler Moore. I think she's adorable and funny and great and fun and she's iconic and uh, as an actor of course I'm interested in reading the autobiographies of other actors but she also I just think is cool and fun and uh, I've always wanted to know more about her life so I'm just gonna read after all uh, and hopefully it'll put a smile on my face. There's a really cute foreword at the front of the book where she's written sort of like a teleplay of a scene between Mary, like TV's Mary, like Mary with all capital letters, and Mary Tyler Moore, the real person, where she's talking to her TV alter ego and they're having a conversation about like whether writing an autobiography is a good idea because what if it ruins people's notions of who she is and stuff? Uh, and it was actually a really cute like two-page little scene that she wrote for the kind of forward to the to her autobiography and I thought it was really really cute and it set the tone really well and it made me want to read it so I'm excited to read After All by Mary Tyler Moore and in fact I will read it After All you're welcome comedy okay the last book on my list for November is a, another one of the books that I'm supposed to have already read for a contemporary a thon which is a readathon that I utterly failed uh, the first book that I actually read from my contemporary athon TBR was Blind Blindness by Jose Saramago. And the second book that I was supposed to read for that I have finally now read or will have read by this point is The Wild Inside by Christine Carbo. This third book from my contemporary athon TBR is The House of Broken Angels by Luis Alberto Urrea, which will leave then two books that I still haven't read from my contemporary athon, but like one day, you guys, one day. Um, I'm gonna read the blurb to this because I described it in my contemporary Athon TBR video, but I don't know if I described it very well. So it says, The House of Broken Angels is a sprawling and epic family saga helmed by patriarch Big Angel. The novel gathers together the entire Dela Cruz clan as they meet for the final birthday party Big Angel is throwing for himself at home in San Diego as he nears the end of his struggle with cancer and reflects on his long and full life. But when Big Angel's mother, Mama America, Approaching 100 dies herself. As the party nears, he must plan her funeral as well. There will be two family affairs in one weekend, a farewell doubleheader. Among the attendants is his half-brother and namesake, Little Angel, who comes face to face with the siblings with whom he shared a father, but not, as the weekend proceeds to remind him, a life. This book is semi-autobiographical by the author, uh, Luis Alberto Urea. So this is another one of the books that, and I think I mentioned this in my contemporary Athon TBR video, this is another one of the books that I discovered because I heard an interview on Writers on Writing 
Uh, there was an interview on that radio show slash podcast with Barbara DeMarco Barrett, I believe it was, with the author, and he was talking about what happened in his real life, and this, which inspired him to write this book, and how important this book was to him. And as I mentioned in my other video, he was just so charming and fascinating and great to listen to on the interview, um, that it just made me know that I wanted to spend more time in his head, and I knew I would enjoy reading his writing. And after having read, I think, the first chapter of this book a couple of months ago, I... I'm pretty sure that I was right about that, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I want to read more books that are about, you know, the American experience from the perspective of other groups of people, people who are not white, you know, people like me. And actually, for Contemporary Athon, this book was my book to be, what was it, the challenge was to read a book by a diverse author. I remember making fun of that challenge because that's a strange way of putting it, but yeah, this was written by a man who is not white. His experience of living in America is very different from mine, and um, I really am actually very interested in reading this book and getting a sense of what his experience has been like as a Mexican-American. So um, those are my books for November. I'm excited to read all of them. I hope I get through with them all. I hope I get through even more than that, and that concludes my TBR for November. So. If you enjoyed this video, or if you have any questions or comments or concerns about the books that I chose, please feel free to like this video, hit the thumbs up button below, write a comment down in the box below if you have any thoughts on these books. And if you love this video and you'd like to see more content like this, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, Reading in the Dark. I'm posting about twice a week right now, I'm trying to hold myself to that. I think it's going pretty well, and I have nothing else to say. And until next time, I will be here in the dark reading. Bye, guys.